you grow. Building your own sub raised garden bed. Hi, my name is Audrey Schroeder. This is the first video blog for my YouTube channel called You Grow. As CEO of my own company for more than 20 years, I really had time for interest other than my business. When I sold the business last year, the hobby was the obvious next. It started off as a veggie garden with five raised beds, then discovering hydroponics and the design and building of my own NFT and Dutch bucket system. Then I tried my hand at seed germination, seedling propagation and indoor grow lights. Lately I discovered self-irrigation planters. This video is a step-by-step -step guide how to build a SIP raised bed with specific reference to South African products and material. Since there is very little South African video blogs for hobby enthusiasts and vegetable gardeners. Please note, none of the brands used in this video are affiliated to me. I would like to acknowledge Al Gretchen of albapepper.com for many ideas used in this video. Now, come and join me. Remember to subscribe and share with friends and family. Intro, equipment and material needed. We are building a SIP raised bed that is two meters in length. Six lengths of 38 by 150 millimeters of untreated pine timber. Since we will have three layers making the raised bed 456 millimeters deep. The sides are also 38 by 152 but cut into 700 millimeter lengths. Also a total of six lengths for the sides. For the side supports we are using 38 by 76 mm cut into 6 lengths of 450 mm long. That will allow us to have two supports on the short sides and two on the length sides of the raised bed. The equipment list include a 90 degree dry square, a utility knife, pencil, measure tape, a hammer, electric drill and some safety equipment such as gloves and protective goggles. For the material list, we need some sandpaper and 60mm self-tapping wood screws. A critical element of a SIP raised bed is the waterproof lining. Ideally, one should use pond liner, but I struggled to get this due to lockdown restrictions. Eventually, I opted for a heavy-duty drop sheet of 100 microns. And then to ensure that the reservoir pipes do not have any seepage of the water and soil mixture, I opted to use some multi-purpose landscape fabric. I bought a 10 meter roll of weed guard landscape fabric for this purpose. For the growth medium, we will use a DIY soil mixture that consists of potting soil, wood bark mulch, cocoa core and perlite. Later in the video I will talk about this in more detail. Just before we kick off with the building process, this is my seedling propagation chamber and seed germination trays under my own grow light solution. Watch the YouGrow channel for future videos on this. Step 1. Assemble bottom layer. Carefully lay out the 2 meter lengths and 700 mm sides in a rectangle with perfect 90 degree corners using the tri-square. This will form the bottom layer of the raised bed. You will see that I have already done the layout and secured them with the wood clamps in order to drill the holes for the wood screws. Also note that I have positioned the timber planks with the red markings on the inside to get a clean wood surface on the outside of the raised bed. Step 2. Assemble next two layers. Ok, now that we have done the bottom layer, it is time to carefully lay out the second layer on top. Try to fit the layers almost perfectly flush and in line. Remember this build will last for quite a number of seasons and you might as well make sure that it looks very professional. By first drilling pilot holes you will see that it makes it much easier to drill in the wood screws. If you are like me that do not have all the mechanical equipment to cut the angles for the side supports, you can use this very handy meter box as a saw jig for the angles. You just select the appropriate angle and apply some elbow grease. Step 3. Place and level planter. Right folks, we have finished the three layer box and I reckon it really looks great. You will see that I have selected an area that will have a minimum of 6 hours of direct sunlight to place the raised bed. Tomorrow I will have to do some digging and filling for leveling our sub bed, do waterproof lining, insert the corrugated perforated pipes for the water reservoir, 
do the outflow pipes and finally fall with a soil mix. But now it's time for a rest after a deserving day. Step 4. Waterproof lining. Today involved some hard work. First I had to get the level of the planter right and then I did the waterproof lining. The leveling and waterproof lining are two very important steps in building the subbed since the principle of water being stored in the reservoir pipes and wicked up through the perforation and right soil mixture is the secret to a successful sip garden bed. Step 5. Corrugated pipes for water reservoir. First I have measured out the pipes in the right configuration. At the back we will have a 1.8 litre pipe that fills the inside of the planter from side to side. This will also be the pipe where the water inflow pipe will be installed. Next we have two short vertical pipes of 550mm that will be acting as the two outflow pipes and in the middle the remaining four lengths of 1.55m to fill the entire floor of the planter. Step 6. Water inlet and outflow pipes. The next step is to make a hole in the long back corrugated pipe. I'm using a 40mm PVC pipe. The bottom of the inlet pipe is cut at an angle to prevent water from being blocked at the bottom of the pipe. I've made sure that the pipe is also long enough to stick out from the top level of the full soil mixture. The 20mm PVC outflow pipes will be installed in line with the two short vertical corrugated pipes and about 85mm from the bottom of the planter. The holes for the outflow pipes have been drilled and installed. I will just seal it with some silicone sealer now. You will see that I've made a hole in the landscape fabric where the outflow pipe will stick through on both ends where the 55mm corrugated pipes have been placed. First the right drainage into the right outflow pipe and then the left drainage into the left outflow pipe. We are almost done and it's really looking great. It was quite a bit of hard work today and I think it deserves a cup of tea. The outflows have been installed and sealed and all the water reservoir pipes have been placed where they belong. Step 7. Prepare soil mixture. We are ready to prepare our DIY soil mixture to be used as growth medium for our planter. First I have used 5 bags of 30 cubic decimeter potting soil and then added a bag of 30 cubic decimeter rough cut wood bark mulch as well as a similar size bag of finer bark mulch. Next I added a 75 cubic decimeter bag of cocoa coal and one bag of perlite. This DIY soil mixture is done to ensure the right amount of water retention and oxygenation to ensure the best growth medium to wick up the water from the water reservoir. Lastly, I have added the right amount of vermicompost organic fertilizer that will provide all the primary and secondary nutrients for the growth medium. Step 8. Fill in soil mixture and test outflows. The next step will be to fill the gaps between the pipes with some of the soil mixture. We need to make sure that there is sufficient soil mixture for the water to be wicked up through the perforated holes of the corrugated water reservoir pipes and the soil mixture. Once this has been done, we will do a proper watering down of the filled mixture between the pipes. This is to ensure that the fill between the pipes does not have any air pockets. This practical tip will give you the opportunity to add some soil mixture to ensure the correct working of the reservoir. The final part of this step involves the filling of the reservoir through the water inlet and to test that the overflows are working correctly before we attempt to fill the planter with the remaining soil mixture. Alright folks, success! It took a good 5-6 to six minutes before the overflow pipe started flowing. So I'm going to stop the water to finish the last step in our bowl. Step 9. Fill planter to top. I have filled the planter with the remaining soil mixture and there we have the final product. A self-irrigation raised garden bed with a beautiful soil mix as growth medium. Wow, I really think it came out fantastic. 
The only remaining thing to do later is to apply some water-based non-toxic wood protection. And here we see the final planted seedlings. It is predominantly leafy greens. I have some cos lettuce, iceberg and some salad bowl. I really can't wait for these to grow and be harvested in 2-3 weeks from now. That's it. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and share.